again, I saw a lady. Tonight, one of the things I strive on doing is to really let people outside of the outside of the mosque know that this is their place as well. Yes. You know, there are many people in our community who are doing a lot of great works yes. to for the toward the same aim that we're trying to do, which is to better our people. And I'm always a believer to support those who are doing it. And there's much that members in our community have to offer that we can also benefit from as well. So I don't know if you've been on social media, if you watched the Super Bowl on last Sunday, right? And even if you've been watching the news, you've seen that since then, there are all type of discussion about the performance that took place, right? right? And I can't really think outside of maybe that situation that took place with Janet Jackson, that you've ever had this type of controversy no. around it, right? But this is good controversy. And as I, to be honest, as I looked at some of the responses by some on um, social media, some of it was a little disheartening. I believe in seizing a moment to use whatever it is of good where, I can, where it can add to our ability to awaken our people. Mm -hmm. And so when I thought about this, and, and I, I like to move by off of my spirit, Brother Shaq and Sister Mama, Mama Fai, you all came to mind with the work that you're doing. And if you listen to their shows, their, their archives, where they've been deciphering uh, the music and what's in the music, the good and even the bad. I remember when that song first came out, Royal. And really the song is kind of like the white, white girl is really like making fun of us, really, <coughs> you know, for a poor boy. I thought about them and just so happened to be they're actually going to, they were actually planning on talking about this same thing, the video that Beyonce put out and even the performance on this show on this Saturday. So I reached out to them and by God, I'm thankful to God that they were not busy. <laughs> so they're here. So without further delay, let's bring up Brother Shaq and Mama Fox. Black Women, Power, and Media of the True Love Movement. Again, thank you. Thank you, family. My brother Shaq. Y'all know me. I'm director of Men's and Boys Program for True Love Movement. Uh, and uh, we're thankful. And it's an honor, uh, Minister Lily, uh, to be here in the mind. That's, that's right. You clap for that. <laughs> But the minister put the call in and, and it really was, he was right, he was right on time for it because this week, this week's show, we had intended on decoding the song. Um, but there was so much uh, interest, controversy around the performance at the Super Bowl and the, uh, the video uh, that we realized that it was a lot deeper in terms of how people were feeling about it. And we're fortunate to have the opportunity where people will listen to us from time to time, as the minister said. Not all of our people are afforded that opportunity. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do a, a presentation where we kind of examine aspects of the song, the pros, the positive part of it. Uh, and then we're going to have what I like, uh, one of my favorite things is a community discussion question and answer period, real relaxed. If you're on social media, it's what takes place on social media. Yeah. Actually, but we're going to yeah. do it in, in your face, mm -hmm. which is the way it used to be before social media. Mm -hmm. Because we know not all of our people are always heard. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that good things about social media and, and the technology is allows people to may, who may have otherwise not been listened to to reach a pretty good sized audience. Um, because our people are thinking, this really has our people thinking. If you've seen any of the comments or read any of the stories, or, I mean, our people are talking about this like they know Beyonce. Um, which, is, which is an interesting thing. And, and so, without further ado, I do want to make this one point. Um, one of the things that I took away from seeing the performance in the video and listening to the song and those things is that the black woman is trying to tell us something. The black woman. But the, the shameful part is, and this is something that I think hopefully we're all paying attention now, is the only reason we even here tonight talking about this is because she came out there half naked, shaking up behind her. That's what had to take place to get us to pay attention to the black woman. When you think about that, because she could have had the same message. I was even thinking about Talking to Mama Fire tonight, to have her come in here with some with a with a behind us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's cold as it is. It's cold as it is, but because she's fine. Now. <laughs> but, but, but 
See, that's already been done. See, that's already been done, and that's where our, I think our problem is. We've kind of, we, we're ignoring the mother of civilization. And so she's acting out, trying to get our attention. And if what we pay attention, and when she's shaking and gyrating and half naked, if that's what it takes, then that's what, that's what our sisters are doing. And they're calling that empowerment, which is interesting. Now, that's sexual power. But the woman has much more than simply sexual power. Right. So we're going to dig into that. Mama Fire, as I said, we're going to listen to the, the black woman tonight. Who better to talk about what the black woman is doing than the black woman, right? So we're going to put all patriarchy aside and other foolishness and reservation. And we're going to listen to our sister. I'll give you Mama Fire. So if anything is about the black woman, I'm going to tackle about the black woman. But the Shack tackles about black men and boys. Mm -hmm. That's how we balance it out because we know us. Mm -hmm. right? We know us. We're going to dig in and then we're going to, you know, spend some time talking to each other. You know, Maya Angelou says people remember how to make them feel. Okay? And so this obviously has made us feel a certain way. So information, the name of the, the art, the piece of art is formation by Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe let's get information, but information is also a word. When I'm decoding, I look at all of it. I look at how it, it looks, how it feels, how it sounds, the words, and all of that. And then I make an informed decision about the art. So the only thing that I've heard, I've done a lot of research, the only thing that I've heard as far as a comment from Beyonce has been this specifically on the song video formation. I wanted people to feel proud and have love for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's important for us as black people to critically analyze everything. Mm -hmm. This means that our brains and our minds are on and sharp vision. So group think, critical analysis shatters group think. Group think is the act of practice of reasoning or decision making by a group, especially when characterized by uncritical acceptance or conformity to profound points of view. So we know, if you've been on social media, we know that anything negative said about uh, formation has been uh, like literally attacked by the beehive or the agency, as people call it. Um, in their minds, she can do no wrong, she can make no mistakes, she is the queen, or the queen. And so that's an example of groupthink. It's not what I choose to listen to. So I think you know, it's important to analyze the pros and cons of any media. But tonight we're going to concentrate on the positives. The positives are very, very glaring. And the, the negatives are glaring too. We really dig in to the, the statement she's making. And so we're gonna we're gonna celebrate, we're gonna do the positives, but then on the radio show Saturday, we're gonna concentrate on the negatives, which might not be taken well, but we don't care because that's part of our power as human beings to be able to discern. I don't know if we remember this, but Beyonce was voted one of the most influential people by Time magazine. Do we remember that? So in 2014, she was voted one of the most influential women. Okay, by the time, which is huge. And it said, this is a quote from that article. Beyonce has insisted that girls run the world and declared, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. She raised her voice both on and off stage to urge women to be independent and lead. In her answer to the question, what would you do if you weren't afraid? She says, watch me. I'm about to do it. Then she adds, you can too. All right, let's see for ourselves. Now, I'm not going to play the music video, but is it safe to say that everybody has seen it? OK, because it's, um, it's got some language. The video has language in it. We have you and babies in here, so I will not play that. But I will play the um, Super Bowl, the Super Bowl uh, performance. <laughs>
music, it's the media, it's the language, it's everything. And so, you know, whether we want to believe it or not, it's extremely powerful. They are powerful. There's power in the media. That means the, the music we listen to, the TV shows we watch, the commercials, the billboards, all of that is media. And then, so, pop culture is what the youth are digesting constantly, especially because now, you know, with social media and YouTube and, you know, all this technology, they are just ingesting consistently, constantly. Power in images, like we said before. Power in messages. Economic power. Power to control narratives. So the stories, you know, media tell, the pop culture tells the stories through media. Equated it to be most influential. If Beyonce is the most influential, you know, if she's voted one of the most influential people, that's the truth about how pop culture is that it's the most influential right now for our children, for ourselves. And that's part of the image that's shown in the video, in Beyonce's video. Beyonce's video and the Super Bowl performance are completely different. Right. We're going to talk about a little bit of how she chooses to present herself at the Super Bowl. The video is very, very different. And the, the statement that she's making in the video is pretty, pretty heavy. These are the most powerful images from Formation video and the Super Bowl performance. Isn't it funny how she says, Okay, ladies, let us, let us get information. Okay. This was one of the parts of the video. You know, she was really, truly making a statement here. Maybe five, six. is dancing. Hip-hop, you know, dancing in front of the police. And the little boy puts, like, as if he was orchestrating. And when you think the police were going to maybe shoot him or maybe do something to him, the police raised their hands. You know, it's... it's Deep because it's a black boy child dancing in a hoodie, which is a representation of what happened with Trayvon Martin in the hoodie, from all the brothers that were killed and shot by police, as well as a Black Lives Matter image. Mm -hmm. So this is the part where they're saying she's a part of Black Lives Matter and all these kind of things because of the statement that she made. It also shows the power of the black boy because he orchestrates, you know, he just does like this and they raise their hands up immediately. So it's a very powerful image. But there's a lot of different symbology in here. As we see Beyonce here dressed in black, and the brothers are all around her. Um, she's in the middle. The brother right here has on a fence. That's a, that's a symbol of uh, the Moors. So here's a little information. The fence is the headdress of the ancient ones, the Mo Moabite Moors, also spelled Moor. It is geometrically formed to represent the eternal zodiac. The body in the fence symbolizes the womb of the cosmos and the womb of the woman, mother. I got this from Bay, rvbayproductions.com. If you do not plan to bring any more royal crowns here, please teach your daughters, who are the direct descendants of the, of the founders of civilization. Teach them ancient high science, culture, Gnosticism, cosmology, alchemy, geometry, algebra, numerology, astrology, architecture, mathematics, philosophies, and the science of the womb. As everyone else is drawing wealth and knowledge from it and wearing it atop their head as a royal crown, except for the mother of civilization herself, the African woman, it says, the Moabite, Moorish, Asiatic African woman. They is important. Of course, her name is Beyonce, mm -hmm. but then they know. Um, the title is also used within the Moorish American community. Members of the Moorish Science Temple of America as tribal titles, which denotes an Islamic government along with the title El. So it's like Lord, God. It, it's funny how the young people calling each other they. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a title. That's a, that's a very um, high ranking title of black people. And we call them each other big. Okay. And then I noticed Beyonce with her head down in the prayer or meditation way. But she also, like, this hand is praying or meditating. This hand is talking about getting money. Wow. Right? You have to do get money. All right? Our brothers. Uh -oh. I know. <laughs> this was beautiful. When I started, I was so excited to see 
a representation of the nation of Islam, the most powerful black organization in America. I'm so excited. The final call is called The Truth. Right. Beautiful. MLK Jr. titled More Than a Dream. And this was um, intentional. Yes. Yes. This was on purpose. Self-sustainability by entrepreneurship, selling newspapers and bean pies in his hand. Most important scenes of Spike Lee's Malcolm X is when those Nation of Islam brothers are in formation. And at the, the Super Bowl, kind of switched, that was all in the video. This is from the Super Bowl performance. They did an aerial view mm -hmm. of the girls in an X formation. The critics and people who are, are talking about it are saying it's paying homage to the Black Panther Party. I guess because of the berets right. and the afros. They don't completely look like sisters from the Black Panther Party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But according to you know those of us, I say this is homage to them. Brother Malcolm X, because of the X, she makes this sign in the video as well in the performance. And Michael Jackson. <laughs> she's dressed, she's dressed like Michael Jackson. Um, Exactly, almost exactly, except she doesn't have a pants. <laughs> but she's dressed, um, she has the X and then bullets yeah. as well. Okay? So, somebody said that Super Bowl 50 is the most watched, most prized, and most financially rewarding event. So, for her to right. do this was a huge statement. Um, but as you see, the, the, like other shakes, they have been shaking and all of that. And it really wasn't huge, like a huge statement she was making during right. Super Bowl 50. Right. Not like she made in the video. Right. I mean, this was amazing when I saw the, the sisters with their hands up the black power fist. Because you know, this is something that really, I mean, white people for some reason just can't stand. <laughs> right. If we say unity, you know why? Because this is the answer. Right. When we all come together like this, yeah. this is the answer. They have plenty. Katrina and New Orleans references in the video. Some critics are saying that maybe she exploited New Orleans, maybe she, you know, brought up old stuff, but after 10 years later, it ain't over That's right. at all. Matter of fact, we have not even really, you know, got under the surface. Right. And I'm saying this as someone who works with young people, and trust me, young people and their families are still devastated yes. because they will not talk about it and they will not equate or see that what they're dealing with now is a direct mm -hmm. reflection of what happened during Katrina. Mm -hmm. They won't even, you know, so we haven't even started talking about it. And so there's several different Hurricane Katrina references. She's shining a light on black people, government, and police atrocities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so kudos for that sister, because I don't know anybody of her caliber doing that. Right. Okay. All right, here's another Hurricane Katrina reference, a very powerful image. Well, I think we should all talk about it all the time That's right. until it's healed. That's right. But this is a cue to research what really happened in the walls. I think one of the brothers, um, Messi Mayo, uh, mm -hmm. rest in peace brother, who is referenced, um, his voice is referenced in the song, mm -hmm. saying, you know, what happened after New Orleans. It brings into mind what really happened. Now, why she chose this brother instead of anyone else, we're going to probably tackle that on Saturday. But um, <laughs> it says, do research what really happened in New Orleans with police. Not just what really happened in New Orleans, but what happened with police, like the Zanzigar Bridge track. Yeah. You know, people ain't that that's kind of like swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. People don't, I don't, I think many people don't know. Mm -hmm. I did some research and found out that Beyonce and her husband, Jay-Z, have created organizations and given money to Black Lives Matter, Katrina Recovery, and Homelessness, homelessness to the Katrina. Mm -hmm. So I did find out that that was the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was some things that I had just heard, but I did my research and found out that those things did happen. So it's not that she just explained who wants and never did nothing for the people in the world. Okay, this is the baby. This is their child. Rocking afros and Negro nose. Um, strong message that black is beautiful. Um, she talked about that in the song, Afro, and then she, she said, my baby hair, my baby's hair has baby hair and afros. And then she said, my Negro, talking about Jay-Z. Um, I love my Negro's nose with um, Jackson, Jackson 5 nostrils. So this is a strong message that black is beautiful, but this is also a message to the black people that were dissing her. 
right? Many people were saying, y'all need a call there, baby. Yeah, y'all are all for that. You know, you got enough of money. They're true, those who need to, you know, and that's what comes up. And plus, they always miss a Jay Z for how he looks. So, you know. All right. Cultural celebrations is part of the video. As you see, the sister here is wearing African fabric, and they have many different skin colors. Many different sisters of different skin colors. Because sometimes, you know, Beyonce, we have a light skin sister. Yes. You know what I'm saying? In the video, so this time she had dark, dark, dark to light, light as well. They were all black, which is a beautiful thing. So she could have easily picked some white dancers. She had buku dancers. I mean, I didn't count to see how many, but it was more, I mean, to make an X like that on the part of the football field. That's a lot. And they were all black. So African fabrics, afros. Somebody said that this was a natural hair, but it, I mean, that, there's no way to know that. <laughs> um, skin colors, masks, I was thinking, it's kind of deep that they have all masks. You know, that's just kind of stuff that I look at. And when I look at the video, I look behind the focal person mm -hmm. to kind of see what's really going on in the background. So I'm not sure unless we're <laughs> celebrating Mardi Gras because she's celebrating the waters. And if you notice, she has on purple, green, and yellow. Mm -hmm. So it could be a Mardi Gras moment. <laughs> But um, what was beautiful about it is that the sister, you know, they're wearing African kind of cultural, cultural things. All right, and I, I don't want everybody to forget, for Halloween 2015, she was dressed as the African queen. Wow. Mm. So she was dressed, and you know, it does have a backstory. She was dressed like coming to America, right? <laughs> and so I thought it was a kind of a weird choice that she has the baby dressed like the lady yeah. who was going to get married yeah. to the prince and then having the prince and her Jay-Z be the prince. I don't know, that was a little weird to me, but it's a beautiful thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, even though it's Halloween and even though it's just the video, she, of her caliber and status right now in pop culture, this is a huge statement, a huge statement. All right, so this is one of the most shocking kind of images, right, that came from the end of the video. So she's on top of the car, the uh, police car, a lot of the time in the video. And she's kind of, you know, talk about being country and this kind of thing. And then at the end, she is on top and it sinks down. And she doesn't look alive or anything to me. So there's a lot of talk that this could be sacrifice. I'm sure it was a sacrifice to come out with this, you know, representation of herself. Baptism, mm -hmm. people have said baptism, Katrina, because we know the car kind of represents car in the water represents Katrina. Drowning, black women, you know, feel like drowning. Black woman's power, because her body is literally making the car sink. Heaviness of the black woman's cross she bears. I mean, these are just ideas that come to my mind. Selflessness, self-sacrifice, and for her, sacrifice of money, power, career, if you take a stand, I mean, I watched the, the documentary with Nina Simone. I don't know if y'all ever seen that one on yes. Netflix. I think, brother, you had said something that made me watch you. Oh, she sacrificed a lot yeah. when she joined the, um, the movement with her music and her um, stand. All right, Black Woman in Unity, my favorite part. <laughs> my favorite part of the song, the lyrics, the Super Bowl presentation, the video, all of it. Because when she says, okay ladies, come on, let's get in formation. She's talking about us together. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go. You know, and I, that's my favorite part of the, the message. Ask Brother Shaq, I've been talking about Black Mama being the key to the rise of Black people forever. Forever, for years, so many years. It's been what started true love movement in, in the life. It, you know, came from a very, very low place in spirit. God, Allah, told me this is the work I have to do. This is my purpose and this is my work. To tell everybody this fact and to walk in this fact and to treat my sisters in this fact and to unify with my sisters as I can. You know, this is my life's mission. The key to the black rise, not enemies, sisters in the struggle, formation, Military, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, and then I, this picture especially makes me think of Chirac. I don't know if y'all saw the movie Chirac. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pros and cons as well, right? Yes. 
Um, but that's the that is the bottom line of both formation as well as Chirac. Very similar. Like this, you could take this picture and, yeah. and think it came from Chirac. Yeah. Okay. Um, I suggest, okay, despite me as our brother, fellow artist, I suggest you watch his movie and do just this. Critically analyze it. And if you don't want to watch it, y'all listen to the true love movement album. When you critically analyze Chirac. Formation lyrics dissected. Of course, that's my favorite part of everything is, okay, ladies, now let's get into formation. Now, because that slay thing is kind of deep, you know, the way we speak to each other, the what we use yeah. is so important. That's right. You know, I'm killing them. You killing them, girl. Mm -hmm. You da da da. It's time for us to really speak life. And so, but that's part of our culture. Mm -hmm. I slay. And then it comes from Big Frida. Big Frida. Mm -hmm. Uh, highlighted or featured in her spot. Right. She, I, we didn't see him in the video, even though there were a lot of images of what they call sissy bounce artists in the video. And so that information, that documentary information came from a documentary that they shot here in New Orleans. There was some controversy around that. I didn't shine too much light on that because that's what we were going to talk about on Saturday. But we really pulling the positive out of here of what we can take away. I talk to Brother Jack all the time about the orange. When we eat an orange, we peel away the peel and throw it away. We don't eat the seeds, we throw it away. We eat the, the, the fruit, and that's good for us. Everything else can, can go. All right, it's a call to action. Call to action. Okay, ladies, let's get information. <coughs> get in line with the movement. Unity, black woman leadership. And then I put a question there, follow Bae, follow Beyonce, follow, I mean, what, what, what did she say? Right, I know what I can take from it, what I can feel from it, but really, what, what did she say? And honestly, I'm not really following her, and I'm not about to follow Beyonce. That's not important to me. Unity for sisters is of the most important. They got sisters with some beautiful minds, beautiful experience, beautiful thoughts. And no matter what they look like, sis, if you got a good heart, come on, let's go. Let's get information. Let's do it. Okay? All right, this looks kind of small, but I will read it off. Okay, she, this is part of the hook. She says, my daddy, Alabama, my Louisiana, you mix that Negro with that Creole, make a Texas Bama. I like my baby hair with baby hair and afros. I like my Negro nose with Mike with Jackson 5 nostrils. Earn all this money, but they never take the country out of me. Got hot sauce in my bag swag. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's <laughs> Southern pride, Southern black pride. Now Creole, I had an issue with, mm -hmm. and that's 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 my own personal issue, right? I had a family on my daddy's side that considered themselves mm -hmm. Creole and not black, mm -hmm. and my daddy bucked against that by marrying a dark skin woman, <laughs> and that was the issue because they treated us very differently because mm -hmm. we were we were browner than the rest. So I, I have an issue with Creole. And the issue was saying Negro right. and Creole. They asked the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. what, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> because Jay Z, no, no, no doubt, has some white. I mean, I don't like to claim that at all, but mm -hmm. if you seen her daddy, I mean, right. there ain't much difference. So, what you doing here? Like, okay. celebration of black beauty as a lesson for black folks that diss her daughter, daughter and Jay Z's goals. Daughter's hair and Jay Z's goals. Okay. Prove to me you got some coordination, slay trick, or you get eliminated. Mm. Okay, so black women are the most coordinated women through rhythm mm -hmm. and natural ability to dance. If you don't have coordination, then you get eliminated. If you don't get in line, fall in line, you get eliminated. I'm wondering if you're talking about white women. Mm. Mm. And you know, she said, slay trick. <laughs> That's crazy. But, right. um, who to me, you got some coordination. Mm. You got yeah. to have coordination in order to fall into formation. So it's like, who. You know, who is she talking to? You might just be a black Bill Gates in the making, because I slay. I might just be a black Bill Gates in the making, because I slay. So that's the part when she put her hands up, her uh, fist up, and everybody else did. This part has me conflicted, because I don't think my highest thought of myself is a white man. Right. But this, but it's about the money. I mean, the last thing that she says in the whole, the whole um, song is, always stay gracious. Best revenge is your paper. Mm -hmm. So at the, I mean, you saw her with her get money mm -hmm. hands. The song is about money. The song is about power, the power of money. 
even economic power for black women. And the, the totem pole idea is that the white man is at the top. Okay? But I know Brother Shaq tells the story all the time about the totem pole being upside down. Right? That the most powerful is at the bottom. Because it holds it up. It's a, a unique way to think of the totem pole. Now, what she's saying is black women, maybe the goal is black women being as powerful as the richest white man. I don't know, I'm not down with that uh, comparison, but you know, that, that again, pop culture, right? A lot of rappers, we use the Bill, you know, Bill Gates, <laughs> they, they lyrics and stuff like that too, because that's just the pinnacle, right? right. Which is, all right. You know you may be, of course she used the B word, when you cause all this conversation. So that's actually in the song, not just in the video, mm -hmm. an afterthought. This was in the thought of making the song, purposeful use, a purposeful use of timing, lyrics, images, and power. So she's saying, listen, I'm about to start a conversation, <laughs> at least. She started a media whirlwind, yes. okay? Very powerful reaction to Beyonce's twice. You know, Brother Shea mentioned to me earlier today, it's something I didn't think about, but let us remember that this is entertainment. This is entertainment. You know, but I don't know if you wanted to bring that up, that idea of... Sure. No, yeah. I, what, I, what we were talking about earlier is that we right now we're talking about Beyonce, but just in, in formulating this particular thing and in doing a lot of the other media and music and things that we, we do, we create that. And we create it together. Some of it's her idea, some of it's my idea. We were inspired by something. But when you, the finished product comes out, you just see the people who were in front. And the presumption is that those are the people who did it, and that may not necessarily be the case. So this this movie was this video was directed by Melina Matsukas. Right. It's her name. She's she hasn't been mentioned a whole lot. Right. But she directed it, and typically the director formulates the concept and the treatment for these kinds of things. So what we really don't know is if this was all her idea and Beyonce just showed up to work. <laughs> because that's really kind of how it goes in many cases. I mean, somebody has a vision, it's their job, that's what they do. This, so you show up, go over there and dance, get the music, and let's go. And when the finished product's out, we're talking about Beyonce is an activist. And Beyonce just might have been showing up to work and get a check. <laughs> You know, I mean, this is because that entertainment allows you to put it together that way. So that was just another thing to consider in terms of the finished product. I mean, when I when I talk about who wrote the song formation, she wrote the song along with three other people. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what part of it she wrote. Mm -hmm. We don't know if she wrote all the lyrics and somebody else wrote the. I mean, they they're under for writing music, but the music is like produced by somebody else. So that might not be the case. But anyway, uh, about four other people, and I think they were me. I'm not mistaken. When the, when it's in the song, she knew she was gonna cause a lot of conversation with the song, <coughs> the video, and the, the performance. All right, she says, "I see it, I want it, I stunt, yeah." No, honey, I don't know if she said it. To me, it didn't sound like that. I dream it, I work hard, grind till I own it. Okay, so it's it's uh, becoming a black woman anthem. Mm -hmm. These young people on Twitter just taking parts of it and just putting it out there, y'all. I mean, they really grabbing hold of this thing. I mean, they are very empowered by this song and by this, um, the video, everything. They, you know, when I say, they're fighting for me, I say, as if they knew her. As if they knew her. It's a trip to, to kind of idolize an artist like that, you know. Work hard, get it, own it. And I hope she's talking about a black business. That's part of our culture. I own it. I twirl all my haters, albino alligators. Okay, so I look back and I listen, and I'm like, who is she talking about, albino alligators? Okay, so this is when I was like, oh, oh, babe, I think you really kind of talk about white people here. You know, now she didn't explicitly say, now that would have been hard, right? But she didn't explicitly say that. But what is it? Where does that fit in, albino alligators? So as I say, uh oh, white folks, come on, sister. Some say reference. Some people say it's reference to a movie called Albino Alligators. I tried to find it and I could not find the movie, so I could watch it. But the person who said it's a movie also gave an um, understanding that in the movie they told the story about how alligators in combat with each other sacrificed an albino 
alligator in order to distract the opposing alligators. Okay. So that's not by accident she put this on the line. Because we know the right man, the white man in this pyramid is in the, the story of El Mayo. And then they bloodthirstiness, they savageness, they So it can be that and also this idea of you know distract using our mind right. to distract. Always stay gracious, your best revenge is your paper. The economic empowerment for black women, black people, is also a missed opportunity to support black businesses in fashion choices and business choices. So if you notice the move the video is very high fashion. Mm -hmm. She even mentioned something about I don't even know how to say it. Givachi. Givachi. She talk about all my she put it in the song. Mm -hmm. Givachi dress, okay? And then she had on Gucci. Her other girls information with Gucci on. And then she had like a three thousand dollar dress that she go down in the water with. A lot of people was talking about the statement she made in fashion. But this I know. You know, you feed in Gucci fans. Mm -hmm. You know, when you wear Gucci and they're representing Gucci, like, listen, you got little sisters mm -hmm. listening to you. You know, people in the media, I love, they idolize her. And they're going to be fighting for what? Gucci? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's a huge missed opportunity. She could easily got a black fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Just like she could have a black director. Now, the director is a mixed race sister, a Greek, Jewish, Jamaica, and then the Red Lobster thing. Yeah. You know, I'm not cool. Because to me, that was a huge gist to black men. Yeah. When she's talking about Red Lobster, he do this, I'm going to send him to Red, Red Lobster. Now, wait a minute. You got a Givenchy dress, but you're going to take him to Red Lobster? Come on, boo. That's a diss to the black man. But she could have easily said a black on business or, you know, something. She could have put somebody on real quick. Right. And said, I'm going to take, you know, whatever. What's that huge thing? What's a black so she missed, of course, she missed so many opportunities. But and they said Red Lobster's profits went up like thirty yeah. percent. Wow. And they wow. that yeah. something could be yeah. a song, yeah. a video, and a performance can be this yeah. powerful wow. that red that people actually go to Red Lobster because of it. Yeah. Wow. That goes to show, show you how how serious pop culture really is. Okay. And media. So of course, there's been some backlash. I never really expected it. You know, I mean, because it is entertaining for the fact. I mean, most people are just sitting there kind of droning from the TV, yeah. not even thinking. But the backlash has been kind of serious and it's growing. Because yeah. I've been researching all day and it's getting deep. Yeah. It's getting deep. Yeah. 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 So this is May and, yeah, former New York City Mayor Giuliani described the performance as ridiculous mm -hmm. and outrageous, he says. Hey. I thought <laughs> he said, I thought it was really outrageous that she used it as a platform to attack police officers. Now we saw the video of the mm -hmm. that she didn't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. Attack police officers, mm -hmm. he says. Do you know it says who are the people well, who are the people who protect her and protect us and keep us alive? That's a lie. Right? <laughs> so if, if you notice, she never mentioned anything. I mean and the Super Bowl performance, because many right. people are angry at her and even talking yeah. about protesting her. Right. Because of what she did at the Super Bowl performance? Right. Like, that's nothing compared to the video. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, she didn't mention anything. She only did a very little bit of the song. Right. Now, what I say about this, they really hate this. Mm -hmm. This means the death of them. So they know it. And so they hate this and then dressed as, as, as they were. You know, I mean, they look very militaristic, even though they were very, you know, they didn't have all the clothes, but the all black with the afros and the, the beret, and they was doing a lot of kind of marching kind of thing. That's scary. <laughs> she, she wasn't attacking no police officers. But you can't just say you scared, because that would be too much. That would be too, too much of the truth. And then this was something I found that was uh, sweet. And it says here, Beyonce's racist, this was from somebody else, Beyonce's racist performance included only black dancers. White girls were not allowed to participate. <laughs> so how many performances have we seen of all white dancers? Right. All white! And you thought black girl could have got up there and did it <clears throat> much, much better, right? It's, that's because of it. You know, because we blow about the art. We <laughs> don't go to dance or anything else. So now, and, and I, what a powerful picture, right? What a powerful.
powerful image mm -hmm. of those sisters. Scantily clad, yes, but the black power fist is just a beautiful, beautiful image. And how dare she, that's the sentiment. Mm -hmm. How dare she, the audacity of her. This is from the conservative site, The Gateway Pundit, and the headline was, Beyonce's Super Bowl performance was a racial political statement in support of Marxist cop killers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did that happen? I don't see it. They need to say Beyonce's video formation was. But no, they're putting all of this on the performance, on the Super Bowl performance that we all witnessed, that we all saw. Now there's something called hashtag boycott Beyonce. If you get a chance, take a look at it. It's real. At first I was like laughing, like it's not real. But it is. People are really talking about boycotting her. They're saying that the Super Bowl 50 performance has been called race baiting, hate speech, racism, and anti-police. I mean, I, I know I saw it just like y'all. It's a Super Bowl performance. But then other white people are saying, come on. And like, you know, so any, any, you know, anybody can see. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're clouded and scared. So there's a protest plan on February the 16th in front of NFL headquarters. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that the, the NFL should have never mm -hmm. let Beyonce perform, mm -hmm. even though she's danced and gyrated for y'all many times before. Exactly. And we all celebrate right. that. Right. When she comes, oh, something yeah. celebrating her own culture. She comes to celebrate, you know, resistance. Mm. You know, and that's, it's, it's terrible. It's like the worst thing she's ever done. So I, I saw this quote. The worry with Beyonce in particular then is that her music and her widely televised show at, show at the Super Bowl will give more credibility, credibility to a dangerous criticism of police. Again, I mean, as she's saying the music and formation, um, but everything should be criticized. Pass it through your filter. Pass it through your mind. You know, we hear about it all the time and to the point where as black mamas we concern about our black sons. All of us. That's serious terrorism. Serious terrorism. So then we got a white girl with the isolated cape. People are marketing this now. I mean, they're coming up with t-shirts and sweatshirts and then Red Lobster with their increase in profits. Beyonce has opened this, this huge thing up and people fall in their life. So my question is, what's next Beyonce? <laughs> right? Is this just a song in a video? You got hundreds of them. So what's next for you? What's the statement you're going to make? How do we harness, you know, harness this energy and really shine a light where it needs to be? You know, I think of um, my favorite song. Well made man video, right? Have y'all watched this? Yes. Yeah. So, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. The criticisms that I have for Beyonce's video song, you know, they always go out, but then they come back to me on reflection. If I'm trying to tell Beyonce what to do, that ain't gonna work. Right? Beyonce not listening to me. So I do it. I do it. I'm asking you what we do. do. Alright, this is just a reminder of True Love Movement that we do workshops and lectures. We, we have started a new saying campaign about getting our minds right. Okay? Talk about black people in particular, black people specifically. And the, the hashtag is get your mind right. We do have counseling. Go to True Love Movement website and go on the same campaign tab. You'll be able to see all the beautiful things that we have. It's my own story, my way girl. It's my, you know, my own. Tune into the Kula Movement Hour mm -hmm. every Saturday live on WBOK. The True Love Movement Hour is not True Love Movement. True Love Movement is doing so many beautiful things in the world. And the True Love Movement Hour just came from that. It's very beautiful. We talk about relevant issues for black people, especially black people in New Orleans. The True Love Movement Hour is seven days a week now. We are on, we have rebroadcast Monday through Friday on internet radio www.247theword.com and then we're live every Saturday on WBOK and then new rebroadcast of True Love Woman Hour every Sunday for SoundCloud Sundays. So this is something that I wanted to show. This is a, a video that my mother made 
of a song that I created along with two powerful sisters. Rally the Troops is very much like getting in formation. And so, how I old count. is it? It's 2010. Okay. 2010, so six years ago. <laughs> this is six years ago. <laughs>
deciphering, decoding, and really digging into pop culture and media because the, the messages are very, very serious. And we have to really protect our children's minds from yes, this. Man. We've decoded and deciphered many songs that we think are really benign, they are serious messages to our babies' brains and our brains too as we listen mm -hmm. as well. So. Right on. Give it up for Mama Five one more time. So like I said, this is my favorite part of this thing. We want to do a community discussion. It's kind of like Facebook, but without the computer. So you don't have to type in any comments, but we would like to hear from you. The sister. I just uh, like to, to bring it like this. Really isn't the first time that Beyonce and Jay-Z had brought something to light that we decided to visit Cuba before the sanctions were just, they came under a lot of scrutiny and controversy for that as well um, when that happened. So I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, I, I did read somewhere he was, uh, he was donated, not donated, he was in a village uh, somewhere and he, uh, they, had, they showed him that they had to walk six miles to get drinkable water. And so right after they showed him that he took the walk with him, he threw some millions of dollars at it so that they could get a closer wow. water source to, to mm -hmm. for all those villages yeah. in that area. Mm -hmm. so. And that was oh, that was like 15 years ago. Yeah, that was a long was time a ago. program that like builds these wells within those communities where mm -hmm. the kids play on a thing that spins the water and pulls the water from right. the ground for the people to use. Yeah. See, and they've that's given they've given like 1.5 million to Black Lives Matter. Like they are like. Like have been steady activists like independently and since they've been married. That's that's part of the problem with the the, the huge glam and glitz that she's talking about. We tend to think if we don't see it, it ain't happening. Right. right. You know, we act like, oh, we get an idea. You know, somebody need to do something because we and if we just turn about it, look, they got a hundred people that's been doing that right. that we could just fall in line or get information right. with them. Right. Who's next? Just know. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs> I'd like to say to begin with, uh, the next day, the day right after the Super Bowl, which was Monday, I think we on Tuesday, uh, in walks, because I'm looking at Because I Sleep, in walks a uh, doctor who is a Caucasian male that has, doesn't look black at all, or had no black in it. He has a cut out photograph of her in his hands when he walks in, a Beyonce. He walks up to, I'm gonna tell him, he walks up to the window and I said, he'll agree to him. He said, isn't she beautiful? And I said, like he said, now there's no Caucasian people in that uh, bank, so it's all black women. He says, he said, man, he said, the, uh, he said black women, are so much better built than white. When he said Caucasian women, he didn't use white. I said, you're mm -hmm. correct, Dr. Harper. Mm -hmm. He said, um, he said, now see, I've heard that when his partners get together, his friends, they have to play poker. And the other person told me that when they get together at poker night, she's the topic of discussion. And he was saying that just when her hair moves, he gets all glittery. He's wow. jittery. He's in his probably mid 60s. So, so because I slip, see, she's already killed in their mind. Now he got to go home and pretend he like to sleep with his wife because she slip. Right. See, because the black woman is what's more powerful than the richest white man. Indeed. Right. Because she slip. <laughs> See, we kill your mind about the woman. Right on. And when you have to go and face that, as Mark Twain is saying, which is ghastly, he's just talking about complexion. Right, right, right. He said, I, I think it's ghastly. <laughs> so he got to pretend. Right. I love that part. <laughs> I, love the, I love the fact because I always vision white, black women walking on the beach where white girls are. And you know, I'm not for all for G strings and all that on the beach. But I just want to see them do it to them. Yeah. Kill them. Right. See, that's the killing right. that I want to see take place. And it just happened right there for me. Because yeah. that anger is coming from that woman. Mm -hmm. See, because they those men were watching that Super Bowl. Yes. And see that that a picture speaks a thousand words. Right. And they can't kill it. Mm -hmm. She's slain. 
but uh, I would like to say uh, also the formation. When I saw on YouTube, not YouTube, on Facebook today, they were lined up, straight line the dancers, mm -hmm. and I saw nothing but the women in the uh, nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that, I didn't even see them with these clothes on. I just saw MGT lined up. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, oh my God. You know, so another thing, I, if correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that they also donated to 10, 10, 15. They did. From what I understand. They did. So we're talking about a multiple, not multiple, but there are many facets. Right. The Creole thing. My sister lives in. Now, now, you know, we make you know what beauty is in this thing that we call Creole, and people come from all over, they ain't never seen nothing like with Creole, but they say it's Creole. There's no other, you can go to Tennessee, Houston, there's no other culture like that except in New Orleans, mm -hmm. where this thing is, is made of race, as you call it. <laughs> but people are amazed at it, because they don't see it no way out. They come here and go, oh, because it's such an influence here. And thank you so much, I appreciate it. I know that was, that was <laughs> thank, you, thank you for sharing because we need to listen. That's what that's what I started saying. I said that everybody, the white man, everybody wanted to look at the black woman. Everybody wanna look at how fine the black woman is, but don't nobody wanna listen to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? That's the place. Um I first I thought I was under a rock because I didn't know none of this was going on until Sister Michelle mentioned it to me last night. Um, and I thought, like, what did I miss? I watched the halftime show, so I'm like, I didn't get it. But what it was, it was the video. Like you said, they're, they're, they're scrutinizing her performance at the Super Bowl, but it was just a performance. Everything that of meaning was in the video. And so when I thought about um, how y'all mentioned how big of a following she has, and they said Kid Rock made a comment like Beyonce is overrated. Uh, I like women with flatter butts and all of this. They said the beehive started leaving bee emojis on his site to where he had to shut it down. He had to get off social media because they flooded. He couldn't say nothing. They kept putting bee, you know, little bee symbols all over his page where, you know, she had to shut it down. But when I read that, I was confused because I didn't, and so I appreciate your breaking down the lyrics because when I read the lyrics, I didn't understand. I said, my thought was maybe she been made the song and then decided she wanted to do something political and the song didn't match. But, you know, you say your favorite part is get information. And all I can think is get information. You know, just the, the breakdown of the word itself. When she talked about the, the, the nose, Jackson Black's nose, I love that. I love the natural hair and the breakdown. So I appreciate you breaking down the song. Yeah. Several things. I, one, I, I shared it with you, and my wife and I talked about it before, and I shared it with others. Like a personal growth moment for me was when I had to realize, like, sometimes you will see black entertainers and athletes, and I'll be like, man, why they, they should have did this? They should have said that. And then it, it made me realize, like, how sometimes we can fall into equating just because they have money and they're on television that they know. Right. And they don't know. And I said that, man, I'm, I was being, I felt like I was being unjust because I was asking them to operate from a base of knowledge that they really don't have. And I said that, I, and that's why I said, like, I had to step back and begin to start realizing, like, man, you know, that they can't do it as much as I would do because they don't know what I know. Like, I come, I come up, the white man is the devil. Right. And they ain't thinking like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? For most part, so using everything as it relates to um, the growth and development of our people. I'll share with, you, with Brother Shaq, you go research this. Hillary Clinton in maybe five or six some years ago, the United States, one of her department, they decided to use rap music to send into these Muslim countries. And they found some rappers that nobody even know about. And when, they, when a reporter asked Hillary Clinton, they said, would you say this is kind of like chess? And she said, yes. She said, I'm, a, I'm about, in paraphrase, she says, I'm about using all pieces on the board. 
And that's what she, like, you see what I'm saying? So, like, with, with some of them, like, they're, they're gradually dead up stuff. And, like, I like what, what Mama Fari said, what will we do? Because now I will take that, like, of the, the portion of the stuff that she brought out, mm -hmm. the good and the bad. You know, because it's like the same thing, like, when, when Jay Z made the song Tom Ford. I'm like, damn, man, you could have mentioned some black man. Mm -hmm. But that may be something that they don't even know. Like, some of them, I take the chance, I send them a tweet. Uh, they may not respond, but right. they might read it. You know, I was like, man, next time you somebody, that's like the other day. We, we decoded that yeah, song. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so the thing is, like, in regards to, there's other stuff that they put in there I'm like, I don't agree with, but just the fact, and I think it was, it, it was very powerful for her to have a picture of that. I know it wasn't no brother in the nation of this right. time, because he'd have, he'd have been on Facebook right now talking about, that was me. <laughs> so they would have consciously got her brother, put him in a suit and bow tie, and put that, and she put truth on the on on road. That was heavy. That was an opportunity to be in the rock. We we don't like to be The white people just wide awake and very uh, cognizant of any type of consciousness that emerges in the slave. Mm -hmm. They ain't say nothing about Beyonce being naked, shaking on mm -hmm. her butt, or anchoring the black mind to sex, and you know. They, also, they, said, they never said nothing about that. At least right. I have never heard them say anything about that. Right. But see, anytime they show any kind of consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they, they're not awake for you to uh, uh, do a whole bunch of aggressive stuff, just the slightest thing and they don't talk about it. Right. Just the slightest, you know, like black folks right. looked at it, black people looked at it, that's how aware they are. Mm -hmm. You know, black folks looked at it and we didn't really see nothing. You know, we saw all aware of it. None of the law, I mean, you know, we didn't think this was gonna be controversial. We didn't see nothing there. Right. But they, right. they be on top of it, any kind of sign that the slave is waiting right. for, any kind of consciousness, <laughs> Anything that's going to awaken the black masses, they saw that brother there with that Moorish hat on. They know what that means. They know what that means. And they're on top of it and they're trying to crush it. So, you know, we should take note of it. Now, she can be naked, indecent, shaking her butt up and down the street. They don't say one word. Not one word. But when she promotes consciousness, you know, it's not a leaning toward righteousness. That's when they get along. Now that's something for us to think about it and take note of. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. That's the reality of that. That's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent point, sister. We, we actually talked about that earlier today about how the, the science of white supremacy is so serious that that very thing, whenever there's any kind of move made that's not benefiting white people, white people are on notice. Mm -hmm. Because how dare you not uplift yeah. white people? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Like you didn't get the memo. This is their thing. You know what I'm saying? And so, but it just goes to show you that they're all afraid because if you if you were righteous people, they wouldn't be so scared. They wouldn't have all the military and all these other things in this full court press on a people that ain't but 12% of the population. We are a small group of people in America. But so one little peep, right? Let me say something. They're ready to jump off. This is Michelle. Um, you know, Elijah Muhammad said that 75% of black people are was with the woman. And a lot of feminists were angry about that because they thought he was saying it was because the woman is so wretched. But that's, that wasn't his perspective. His perspective was that the black woman is so important and so valuable to the rise. So when I looked at you know, this protest and him being upset on my girlfriend called this morning, she was telling me about the protest they're planning to have. I was like, oh, that's so crazy. crazy. But you know, the more I thought about it and I looked at your presentation, they have her noted as one of the most influential right. Right. people in America. Mm -hmm. Now she's espousing, in their mind, militancy. Right. Yes. She's pushing back on police brutality. Yes. Oh no, black woman, you shake your butt. Yes. 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 You don't try to elevate the consciousness of your people. Yes. Now, if, if a man had done that, I don't think they would still be complaining about this if Jay-Z had put on a show like that right. with brothers with their fists mm -hmm. up. No, but you That's black right. woman, and mm -hmm. see black girls are listening to this girl. Yes. They are. Their children are 
of this yes, to her yes. as well. Yes. So I think that's one of the reasons they're, they are afraid as well of what she's pushing, especially in that video. Yes. Yes. Right. Well, let me just say that um, white feminists mm -hmm. have now started to uh, not protest but push back against Beyonce talking about oh, she, wow. Beyonce talking about she's a feminist mm -hmm. because real feminists, they say, is diversity meaning she would have had she would have had white dancers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's not no real feminist or whatever it is, which is good. I'm glad she would be interested to see how she actually responds. Right. She's not a capitulate and apologize. If she her PR people, you know, do like they typically do it, just ignore. I'm excited to see it. So a few things. I am an active member of the Beehive. So so oh well um as so to that when um when someone comes for Beyonce Beyonce is every single part of the black woman that people have tried to beat down and kill and, and take over and manipulate. And she speaks so much for so many of us from, from very many different perspectives. And that's why I love Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And so when you say something about Beyonce wearing something short or wearing something revealing or singing about something that represents the black community or the black woman from any aspect, did you come for that part of me? And so that's why I think the Beehive is so defensive of her because she reflects a lot of us. Mm -hmm. um, so for that. And then um, secondly, everything she does, she is the head of. She like is meticulous in all the things that she plans yes. and all her tours. She knew what she was doing. She is not going to apologize because she did it on purpose. She knew exactly right. what was going to happen. She released that video Saturday night. And then she knew that she released it Friday, somebody would have shut the performance down on Sunday. And so that video came out on Saturday night and when I saw when I saw like the drummers and saw what they were wearing and like knew that she was gonna sing that song, I knew that it was gonna come down. I knew it was. But everything that she does is very meticulously planned. Every word in that song she approved. Every image on that video she approved. And so I think that um, I think that at this point in her career she's at a point where she can do these things without being blackballed or cornered into into what other people want her to do because she's got money. Right? She's got support, she's got support, she's got a fan base. And so anything that if people try to do now to hinder her isn't really going to affect her. I'd be interested to see after this hashtag the uh, boycott Beyonce is uh, be interested to see what that age category would look like, what that what would that look like in terms of demographics because you know the young people love they they can't tell white children nothing. Right. So be like fifteen and old. There's a lot of white women that I went to high school with that are like really upset about it. Yeah. Like, so yeah. like, yeah. 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 She, she, uh, I was just thinking about what uh, Sister Phyllis had was talking about, just what the the uh, the message she sent out and what and where she did it from. You know, that's pretty much you could ask everybody out with the money for Super Bowl tickets. Tickets was like five thousand dollars. So who the majority of the people that's there? Come on. So, and then look what you do it at our time where we kind of congratulate and raise up all these white. Athletes like majority of the league is not black, and your ex of people out at the Oscars and all that. Then you come around and put the ex on like we know where that ex come from. Come on, we know what the with the uh, Black Panther stood for and all that stuff. So when they see about her attacking a police officer, it's just the the message that she putting out with the people was standing for back in the sixties and really as. Uh, unified together. So they kind of the same way how y'all breaking it down. That's the same way how they saw it. On their defense, that's why they coming out. How they coming out because they know her fan base, and we can, you know, you dress the way you dress. Look how many black girls dress like follow you when you dress. So now you talking this, 
Now they don't they probably too. mean that we can start following you into that. And then I when they so. follow you into that, that's going to rise up the black women, which is going to have the black man with the, the power and the strength with the black woman. Thank you, Thank you Say we got time for one more, Yeah. I was just thinking about uh, influence, just that mm -hmm. her, um, Beyonce, I believe that if she had done this video and this song before she was named the most influential person, she, she would not she have been on the cover. <laughs> it makes me think about Oprah Winfrey when she made that statement on her show about the beef um, not eating beef and then they took her to court behind that yeah. she became so popular the book club and all of that became so widespread and her influence her just saying I don't eat beef or I'm not going to eat a bird or whatever what she said that influenced a lot of people yeah. and the beef people understood and realized the influence that she had I also think about Bill Cosby the Cosby show was at its height, you know, uh, several de decades ago. He wanted to buy NBC. He's a conscious black man. So we can't allow you to do that. So we're going to do this smear campaign, you know, on him. I'm still on the fence as far as these allegations or whatever, but yet it's still uh, crucify your character, crucify your persona in the, uh, in the media. And also Michael Jackson. He was in, uh, profoundly influential mm -hmm. around the world. He was also leaning towards Islam, yeah. and so the smear campaign with the allegations with the children and all of that. So they have to attack your character when they see you growing in consciousness, and then you put out something that shows I'm awake, and I'm trying to awaken the masses, that's when they come out. So we, we thank y'all for your question. <laughs> takeaways and action items that we can do here with this social media we have the power to influence the narrative mm -hmm. even in the little circles that we have in our social media friends so like think about what what what, what my fire showed as relates to the lyrics well so now if you're going to talk about what Beyonce did on Saturday with the video what she did on Sunday now talk about it in the narrative of what she was saying mm -hmm. so now when people hear it now they're looking for that. You see what I'm saying? So talk about it. Did you see this? Do you know that's connected to? Because everybody don't know what the fans. As I was typing something up in response to somebody putting the criticism out about Beyonce, a girl, a, a you came up to me and said, "Did you see the uh, the the, the uh, halftime show?" I was like, "Yes." Yeah, what you thought about it? I'm talking this. I said, "Did you see them dress like kind of giving homage to the Black Panthers?" And she was like, "Well, who's the Black Panthers? That's that's Carolina Panthers last time." So she didn't even know. So it gave an opportunity. And a lot of times with those young people when I've done stuff, like breaking lyrics down, they repeat the lyrics and they, ne they don't know. So now we have the opportunity to give them that. So we post it, post it on Facebook, post it on social media, Instagram and all that. Post it doing that so now we're shaping the narrative before they start coming. Because normally they tell us, this is how you should see that. And I would say this. He did, I pulled this up because I was about to tweet. I almost tweeted Jay-Z and uh, Beyonce to find out, y'all need to promote a black. But I thought about it. He did a line when he talked about he would leave his share of Carol's daughter to his to his, to his his daughter. Remember Carol's daughter, the black girl stuff? Unfortunately, it, I think she ended up selling it and it sold it. So he put that out. So, but those are di those different things. And this, the brother, uh, Bob Marley says this. He said, they, their mindset is kill them before they grow. Right. And there's a brother with 0017, the CD that we have, he has a song and a hook says, they don't want to see us as butterflies, so they kill us as caterpillars. And see, this is what this backlash is, because if she's a trendsetter, like Jay-Z's so powerful, remember when throwbacks were real popular, he made one line. Yeah. And he said, he made one line, he said, I don't wear throwbacks, I'm 30 plus, give me a crisp pair of jeans, and button and up. And the so next ready. day, people stop wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something else that you may not notice. Remember how, how the Molly craze was? Yeah. yeah. Remember how everybody was yeah. talking about Molly, Molly? Yeah. And on that time force that he made, he said, I don't pop Molly's out. And after you saw that, what happened with the rappers talking about Molly? No, you didn't really hear it. Wow. But see, people, like he says in his lyrics, he said, like, people are not, they get caught up in him talking about selling drugs and they miss it. But he has a lot of 
heavy social commentary. But people miss it because they think, oh, they, because he, they're saying he's not a Nas. He's not a Chuck D. Right. And he's not. You see what I'm saying? In the last part, I want to just read. This is something when J Electronica came out, and he came out with his, he came out with the FOI uniform, and he was cursing, and people there, people in the nation, which I understood, because we come up to respect the uniform, but people was, Curse and they was like, man, he shouldn't have been doing it. And they had, they were, they had, a, they had validity to their stance. But Minister Farrakhan says how he always looked for God's hand or something. And he always looked for our people to have the opportunity to. Like he says this, Brother Jesse sent me, now I'll, I'll send it to you. Brother Jesse sent me some notes at a table talk with the minister. And the minister was teaching those around him about why he's so effective with entertainers. He says that when they come in my midst, he says, I don't freeze them. Right. Meaning, I don't get into that, yeah, you doing this, you doing it, you should be doing it. He says, I teach them. He said, if I teach them, it's only a small amount of time you're going to start seeing it manifest. When he developed that relationship with Snoop, the next thing we know, Snoop ain't coming to the nation of Islam, but Snoop went to he became a roster. And he started doing kind of, he, Snoop did a video where he was addressing the black and brown gang violence, but you don't see that, right? And so the minister said this, he wrote an article, he wrote a letter, and he says, the Messiah is one who is encouraging the steps that each and every human being makes in the process of reconciliation mm -hmm. to God and the resurrection to our original position with him. I am like a parent who is watching the steps that our people are making that we are making in the process of resurrection. What, par what a parent, he said, what parent seeing his child walking Making his first steps, walking toward his mother and father, dressed in a diaper that needs change and will think of the diaper change. No parent will think of the diaper change. The parent will praise the steps that the child is making, knowing that the parents will have a little more work to do in teaching, teaching and training the child, teaching that with teaching and training that the child may one day be potty trained. Wow. And they teach educators that you can have some students that all they do is cut up. But if they do one thing, they tell you, make over it. Yeah. Make over it. And that's the, that's the same thing because personally, I think in regard to what, the, what they're kind of, like with the whole influence, using a big freedom and, and messing mind, they're, produ they're, they're, they're advocating another lifestyle. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is like, we'll deal with that when it comes, but right now, while this is not everybody's attention, I'm going to direct you to this. Right. And so that's it. But thank you all. <laughs> so now, Y'all have Twitter, text, y'all, I'll get the link in the time. We need to tell everybody to tune into WBOK. They're, they're, they're all Saturday. Every Saturday, 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 Saturday at 5 o'clock. Every Saturday at 5 o'clock to listen to what they're talking about. Yes. And uh, just put the word out about what they're doing as well. And so we, as we get ready to look past the chat at receptacles. And when is the rebroadcast? Okay. And then SoundCloud, anytime, just download SoundCloud and just listen to that video, put up the news, uh, pre-broadcast every Saturday. And so, <laughs> look, also Saturday from, from 1 30 to 3, 1 o'clock to 3, 3 30, we're having our recruitment and beef mediation training, training yes. seminar because we want to expand the amount of people. So, as, as it begins to pick up, because now people are calling who they may not be involved in street beef, but they just have conflict. Right. Like we may have one tomorrow or Friday, just about a, a person with a manager at a, a, a at a store, and also on also on Saturday, uh, Beat Mike is having his his solo exhibit. I got a chance to go in there and see it, and he's using art and different things. And on Sunday, inshallah, we're gonna touch more on this similar subject, but based upon what Minister Farrakhan asked the question, he talked about how the um, the artistic community can be the vanguard of social change. He talked about it in, in, a, in, a, in a book, Talks Life for America. So we want to look at that. And now, you know, so like you said with the trend, now all of these rappers, all of these singers, they're modeling after Beyonce. Right. Like some people say, Ciara was just another version of Beyonce. So now you see Beyonce doing this on a big stage. Now, watch how you may start seeing some of the other ones start doing it. I want to ask all of us in here one little challenge for everybody in here. Like I said, we talked about Beyonce, and the reason we were talking about Beyonce is because what we saw her do. So I would challenge us to listen to the black woman. 
Don't you just look at the black woman, listen to her, because she's trying to get our attention and she's doing it by what we, we like to see. But let's listen to what she's got to say, because she got all that power for a reason. So we got to get off of the off of the neck of the black woman, and that, I'm, that's a challenge for all of us in here, men and women, because we all are the patriarchy, and we all think that it's a man's work. But we really have to look at who births this nation, who births this world. So if that ain't gone, I don't know who it is. And we need to promote that video. Is that video online? Rather than sister. Dad and sister. And sister, uh, sister Nihanda's video as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, sure. Now, it's a jam, huh? Oh, I wanted to say to Brother Shaq first. It's a man's world. Without a woman, no girl. Indeed.